When I left high school, I was actually enrolled in arts law uh, at ANU and then I went on my gap year. And during the second half of my gap year, the first half I worked, I first went to Cambodia, Phnom Penh for three months. I was volunteering as an English and maths teacher at an NGO called Cambodian Children's Fund. They do amazing work. They've basically built from the ground up these schools with access to fantastic education for all of these kids in this area called Siang Lin Che. And while I was working there, my friend Jill worked with children with disabilities and was creating this amazing fostering program specifically for kids who had at times been abandoned because their families didn't have the means to be able to care for them because they had special needs. And Jill's partner, Jimmy, was actually over there working for Engineers Without Borders Australia. And he was, and he was telling me about the projects they were doing. And I went, wait, you're helping people as an engineer? I'm so lucky to be so privileged. I come from a really privileged upbringing and I've always been told, you know, you can do anything. It doesn't matter if you're a girl, it doesn't matter anything, you can do it, put your mind to it. And I've been lucky I've had the means to be able to do that so far. And so I had it in my head that to help people, if I wanted to give back, I had to be a human rights lawyer. That's what you do to, <laughs> to help people. Um, and so talking to Jimmy and hearing these projects going on, I went, wait, that's having a tangible benefit and you're not in law? Like, what's going on? So about a week or two after that, I changed my degree. I re-enrolled at Engineering Arts, ANU. And then I heard about some other programs at ANU, like Year in Asia, and realised that I quite enjoyed learning languages. And so that was to Engineering Asian Studies. Engineers Without Borders Australia has different chapters, and there's a chapter in each state. Because the ACT is quite small, our chapter is both a state chapter and a uni chapter. So we're EWB ACT chapter. I've been the secretary of that since I think about three weeks after I arrived at ANU, I've been pretty keen on it from the get-go. EWB as an organisation does amazing projects in multiple locations like Nepal, Cambodia, Timor-Leste, things like access to clean drinking water, access to clean energy. And so we use these real life projects and we create little workshops. We take them to schools across the ACT as well as Southern New South Wales, anywhere from late primary school to end of high school. So one, for example, is floating houses. So you're given a bunch of materials and you have to like build a house out of like plastic, out of water bottles, that kind of stuff, and see how many marbles it can hold before it sinks. And that's drawing a comparison to the issue that they have in the Tuntle Sap region in Cambodia, where water can get really high, like the regions can flood and it can lead to, you know, people's homes flooding. And so these workshops, I find disproportionately interest females, because if you look at humanitarian engineering, we outnumber men significantly. <laughs> if you look at normal engineering, we're normally pretty outnumbered. So I think humanitarian engineering is genuinely a very important way to get more women greater representation into the engineering field.